Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Captain CA here. And today we're going to do one of those videos that we do every month, which is the top five inshore baits of the month. This is March. By no means is this a hard, fast rule. It's just my way of pointing you in the right direction to catch more fish this month with your artificial lures. So without further ado, let's make our way back to the shop and I'm going to give you a little spoiler alert. There's going to be two top waters in this top five, which is pretty exciting. talk the about the top five baits. Like I said in the intro, by no means do I mean these baits only catch fish in this month or you shouldn't use them throughout the year. That's not what these videos are about. I like to reiterate this. These videos are about putting you on a path to give you an idea on what types or categories of lures are actually going to be probably dominant during this period. Now, across the Southeast, the upper Gulf Coast, Texas and the Carolinas, we have some still some pretty wild temperature swings going into March. But all in all, looking ahead in the forecast, it would seem that the weather is going to be above average in air temperature, which means we're gonna have a really quick warm up. And I've already seen it here in my home water. So generally I do not rank these baits in order, but I am going to do it this time. Um, and before we get started, I wanted to tell you about one of our sponsors, which is Diamond Fishing Products. They make a number of, of products, just not braided line, monofilament, fluorocarbon, that's what they're known for, but they also make some really great fishing tools and some terminal tackle that's worth checking out. So it always helps me if you guys will reach out and investigate some of the products and the companies that support us to make this channel a little better. Now, let's start, start, that. Let's start with number five, which is gonna be a topwater. Here we go. No surprise, we just did a video on this bait, and it is the Papa Mullet. This is a popping type top water. The reason I love it this time of year is because we can still have some chilly days that'll bring that water temperature down. But for the most of us, we are on rising trends. The, the cadence that you can work this bait at is just amazing. It's just not like the typical walker where it's back and forth and back and forth when you walk the dog, walk the dog. It's not like that at all. You can do all kinds of things with this bait. You can walk the dog with it, of course, but you can chug, 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 let it stop. Chug, 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 let it stop. You can just kind of reel it and let it make a wake off that cup face and then start walking it. There's a lot of possibilities. Plus this bait does a, a really good job of drawing strikes from depth. Now, I don't throw this in ultra shallow water. I typically, the shallowest I throw it in is like two, two and a half feet and that's during low light periods. But I do like it from two and a half feet to five feet. This is, this is a great plug. Fishing it between docks, Fishing along mangrove shorelines where you know fish might be under there on higher tide faces. Um, if you've got that long eel type grass and the fish like to sit down in it, this will pull them out. Uh, just, just an all around getter bait. I love it. I love it. It's great for speckled trout, but if you walk it spastically on low light periods, you're going to catch your share. Those of you that live in snook territory, you're going to catch your fair share of snook. Now moving on. Let's talk about number four next. It's kind of a coin toss. It really is. Um, it's so easy to say, throw a 17 MR, throw a Mirrodin. So easy to say that because we're at that point where pinfish and shad and things are moving back into shallow water and you're starting to see more of them. 
but we also have a ton of glass minnows and little sardines working their way back onto the flat. So when I, when I was trying to decide what was going to be number four, I really was torn between these two profiles. But I will tell you this, both of them do a great job. This one does a better job of kind of flashing and has a slower sink. And this one sinks a little bit faster and it's a little bit more flashier um, when you really work it harder. So I'm going to say you pick them. This is the number four bait, either one of this size bait. They're both around that three eighths of an ounce type plug. So you can throw them well on spinning gear and you can throw them on medium casting gear pretty well. Um, why did I pick baits five and four to be hard baits? Because if you're going to throw hard baits, this is the month to throw them. Usually as you're coming out of February and you're getting into March and April, Hard baits are really good play. This is the one time of year when I gotta tell you, I wanna throw hard baits. I mean, the only other months that I'm really excited about throwing hard baits more than this month are usually like November and December when the fish are transitioning back into the back. But hard baits, March is a tough, tough month not to like them for that. Let's go to number three. Number three is gonna be this, going back to the soft baits. Uh, and I do that because I feel as if there's going to be some opportunities to sight fish um, or to target fish where you need to make a slicker presentation. It's hard to be any more slick. Now, could you still throw Ned Rigs? Sure. Could you still throw the bugs? Sure. But this little scented Z-Man 4-inch bait, especially in the more natural, organic, match the bottom colors, what do I mean by that? This is Redfish Toad. I think it does a good job this time of year. Um, the Right Stuff, that's another good one. That's more of a golden brim type pattern. Any of those darker browns or even greens um, that match kind of the seafloor bottom that you're fishing, I feel that this time of year, if you're targeting redfish that are tailing, which I've been seeing a lot of lately, I feel like this is great. It's not only a scented product, as you can see here on the packaging, um, but it's just, it's, it's the standard Alaz Tech TPE plastic that has more action um, than you can imagine. It's, it's more resilient to being pulled apart by pinfish. And, uh, and they come in a, an array of colors that I think can't be matched. So if you wanted to go to some of the minnow colors, you could if you didn't want to throw the hard baits. But if you're trying to give something that little shrimpy look and that little hop around the bottom, tough to beat that Z-Man um, 4-inch Cinnamon Jerk Shads this time of year. Now, I put it on a 1 12th of an ounce. This is a, a 3 aught hook, but uh, but you could put 4 aught hook on here. It would work just fine. You weight it the way you want to. If you want to put it on a small jig head, it would work just as well. All right, let's go to number two on the list, which is kind of one of my favorites because I like to target speckled trout. So we're gonna look at this one next. Again, these are just parameters, give you an idea. This is one of my favorites to throw in March. It's a Catch 2000. It's a nice, slow sinking, suspending style, sub walking bait underneath the water. Could you use a Paul Brown? Absolutely. In fact, last month I encouraged you to use the Paul Brown. Could still use the Paul Brown if you're tra targeting a speckled trout like me. But if you're going to use the Catch 2000, this is the time of year to use it. You're going to catch your share of nice big trout because they're looking for something about this size to eat. Um, but you're also going to pick up a couple of reds with this plug and you're probably going to catch your share of big snook as they move to the outside because they just started seeing water temperatures consistently staying in the 70s even at first light in the morning. So if you're looking to toss a plug that I feel not only cast great but you have a lot of control with the depth. Like I work this plug a lot in two and three feet of water and that's the comfort zone for fish. Once you start getting below two feet of water, I know we all have boats and kayaks and things that get us into those zones, but it limits what we can throw at fish that won't spook them. 
you get to two or three feet of water, a lot of those fish are a lot more comfortable. We spend way too much time focusing on getting too skinny and we miss all the fish that we're passing in two or three feet of water. Remember that. But the Catch 2000, number two in my book for the month of March. What's going to be number one? It's going to surprise you. Here we go. It's something I've talked about. I just cut it off a rod because it's been doing a great job for me. I uh, just recently fished with Cameron, my son, as you guys follow the channel know. We were fishing the Big Fish Classic and we ended up scoring a fifth place trout. We were not even really fishing for trout, the trout category. We were focused on redfish and we caught nine redfish, as luck would have it. All week long, I was catching fish that were in that 25 to 27 inch range that were pushing six plus pounds, maybe even to seven. Um, but we got nine redfish bites and couldn't get one of them even close to six pounds. So it was kind of a, a moot point there. But from the back of the polling platform, I was throwing this modified 27 arm R. This is a Miradine XL. But if you look closely, you can see I changed the hooks on it. These hooks are those BKK spear hooks that I've done videos on. They're extra wide gap and they're lighter than the factory hooks that come on this lure. By doing that, this plug will hit the water and sink for a second down four or five inches and then pop back up and then you can dart, dart, dart and then it floats back up to the sur surface. So it basically behaves like a floater diver, like an old 7M where it'll dart and flash underneath the surface and then come back up and then you do it again. Well, it delivered for us in that tournament when we were trying to catch speckled trout because a big speckled trout, we never caught one under 20 inches with this plug. So it made my number one for March. It's a little trick um, that's been around for a while in, in Texas because I know some of you guys are going to comment, well, that's just the double D. That's, you know, something that Jay Watkins has made famous out here in Texas. Um, and it is because they lighten the hooks up on them also to make those baits a little bit more effective. But Captain Billy Henderson does it over here on the west coast of Florida. And, uh, and he has a reputation for producing some incredibly big trout here. So that's been working for me. Hopefully these top five baits will work for you as well or put you on the path to about what you should be throwing this spring. Spring is definitely here, I promise you. I don't think there's too many more cold fronts coming. I think you can count on some excellent speckled trout action. Reds are tailing everywhere. It'll just be a, a matter of time before the schools start getting together. And then the snook have definitely made their transition from the back. They're mostly out in the front now on some of the bigger, more expansive flats, barrier islands, and they'll be on the beaches before you know it if it stays this warm. Enough. Hell, we'll be talking about tarpon soon. If you like what you see here and you enjoy these types of videos, our television shows reside on here. So does our Tidewater Diaries podcast. And you can see that I've been promoting for quite some time, you know, some of the stuff that we teach in Flats Class University here. Now, we don't go as deep on Flats Class YouTube as we do in Flats Class University. But if you're interested in joining Flats Class University or, or you're, you're just I'm piquing your interest, go over to flatsclassuniversity.com and see what we have for you there. All the lures I talked about today, honestly, if you can't find them in a local retailer, you can go to sodiumusa.com and you can find them there. And tell them I sent you there because if they don't have it, stop looking. Okay. That's your March Bates video and I'm headed back into the studio to do another one for you. Take care, everybody, and keep those rods, man.